Intensive Carrot. What a plant. It's arguably one of the most unique plants in Plant vs. Zombies 2, and I can see why people could potentially like him. Unfortunately, Intensive Carrot is a really bad plant. Just obscenely bad. However, you probably already know this. Or so you think. You see, Intensive Carrot isn't just bad, it's outright, straight up, poorly designed. And while it may initially seem weird to look at this guy and go, yeah, you just suck, you will never be good, to any plan in general, at least if you want to be correct, Intensive Carrot is one of those rare cases where making it do anything will, quite literally, result in an entirely different plant. It's just that bad. And no, I'm not just being unfair here. There's logic here. There's strategy. There's a reason this guy is so bad, and I'm here to show you just what it is. But, as it'll be a norm for a long time to come, I should start by explaining Intensive Carrot itself, giving a full rundown of its abilities. So, let's get to that. Intensive Carrot is a carrot plant. Its bottom half is shaped like a drill for... some reason. I actually don't know the reason, but it sure has a drill beneath it, and this sure is design. Beyond this, it really is just a carrot of eyes, but I suppose a lot of plants are like this, so it's not too surprising. Anyways, Intensive Carrot is an instant plant, meaning that on placement, it'll do its ability instantly. Unlike most plants, you can't just place it anywhere. You need to place it on a plant that has been eaten or destroyed by a zombie, and when you do, that plant will be revived. There's some smaller details that need to be cleared up though, so let's clear them up. A plant being dead is a weirdly specific state. For a start, if a plant dies as part of it being planted, it doesn't count as dying. You can't revive, for instance, a cherry bomb or squash. However, some other instant plants that specifically trigger on being eaten can still be revived, namely plants like Sunbean, Chili Bean, and Hypnoshroom. In addition, plants only count as dead if they are killed in certain ways, to make things more complicated. All zombie abilities that damage plants will cause them to be revived, if they don't move a plant. If an explorer burns a plant, it will be revivable. If a plant kicks a plant off the field, they won't be revivable. Once you place a plant down on top of a dead plant, they will no longer be revivable. Shoveling a plant does not count as it being dead. Vine plants will never be considered dead if there is another plant on their tile. As vine plants always die before the plant inside, you will only be able to revive a plant inside. Plants on minecarts which die can only be revived on the spot they actually died, not when the minecart is elsewhere. You can't place intensive carrot on tides, and plants that die in water will not be revivable. You can revive plants that die in lily pads, however, but only if the lily pad survives. Otherwise, the plant will not be considered dead. If a plant died on ground level, the tide goes over it and goes back, the plant will still be considered dead. For quick. Don't run intensive carrot in Bigway Beach. Don't plant on tiles where plants have died if you want to revive them, and Punk Clash Excavator are capable of killing plants beyond normal death. You probably won't need to worry about a lot of this. You can always tell when a plant is revivable, as a space will be replaced with a ghostly image of a plant you wish to revive when you select intensive carrots. When placed, the plant will only be revived at the end of the animation, meaning that in some cases, the revive can actually fail, such as if it's untied and a lily pad gets eaten. It also means zombies have time to walk past the plant being revived before it can actually get revived, meaning they can often attack plants where they're unable to attack due to zombie hitboxes. Plants that are revived are considered as being planted again, so effects that trigger on placement will trigger again, including plant food if a plant is boosted. The only difference is HP, which by default, Intensive Carrot will set to half. In other words, walls and things are going to be down a lot of HP when revived, and melee plants are going to be exceedingly frail. Though, most mods will remove this, or make an increase health instead. This may sound overly complicated, but it's honestly not. A lot of this is just edge case stuff. In reality, the main important things are simple to understand. You cannot place over a dead plant, otherwise they no longer count as dead. And plants are revived, count as being planted again. These both account for some very important elements of intensive carrot. One of them forming, literally the only thing, intensive carrot is heckin' good for. Oh, you thought of these traits sound at all useful? Ha! No. Intensive carrot is terrible. Its literal design is so inherently flawed that this video can exist. So, let's begin the rant, shall we? 
Reviving is a strange ability, and I really feel the need to emphasize that reviving isn't nearly as viable as people tend to think. Firstly, there are two stages to a plant needing to be revived. 1. The plant must be valuable enough that, when losing it, the player must actively want to replace it, and doing so without carrot is a real problem or challenge. 2. The plant must be lost often, and need reviving often enough to warrant bringing a plan for it. I'll start with first here, as the act of reviving isn't the most logical thing on earth to actually implement. Not many plants are actually valuable enough that they really want to be revived. This is especially the issue in vanilla, where intensive of carrot costs 100 sun for some reason, but in mods is still usually somewhat relevant, as in a lot of cases the most expensive plant you can revive will cost about 300 to 400 sun in most strategies. In most cases, the best plants to revive will actually be plants with long recharge as a result, which is Collie Power, but now the second issue comes to light. You aren't losing Collie Powers. If you've played the game for a long time, you're likely to know that the best place to put a majority of your plants are here, behind the front line. Your most expensive plants should be here, your most valuable plants, anything actually worth reviving. I think you can see the problem, but if it's not clear, plants back here don't die very often, at all, which is a serious problem for remittance of carrot, because it makes bringing it a much less reasonable concept. Even if they die, reviving a plant in column 1 is still going to lose you the mower. It's not going to change anything. This mostly results in intensive carrot being useless for a wide variety of situations. You simply do not lose viable plants enough for reviving to be a good idea. This essentially renders it only usable for melee and wall plants, as those will be lost far more often than anything else. And in vanilla, it will literally half the HP of these plants. And in both cases, they are nearly expensive enough for this to be worthwhile. Okay, but let's presume reviving these plants were worthwhile. Let's say that there was this really cool wall plant that costs 300 sun, and a super strong melee plant that costs 350 sun. You still aren't using carrot, that's not a good plan. This is the second big issue of carrot. Do you know what is more valuable than bringing a plant back from the dead? Making it not die in the first place by blowing up things that were going to eat it, or, or kill it, or, or whatever. M my point is that most instant plants are going to be a better slot, as they can stop the plants from dying, while killing zombies, which intensive carrot does not. Plants like squash, cherry bomb, and stolia all can help prevent plants being lost by damaging, slowing, or otherwise disrupting the enemy horde. These plants all have real reasons that intensive carrot is so worthless. They utterly outclass intensive carrot in protecting plants, as they prevent the horde, as opposed to simply dealing with the consequences. In the same slot, intensive carrot can revive one plant that has already died. A cherry bomb can relieve pressure across three different lanes, saving those lanes from going down entirely, making future zombies easier to deal with, etc, etc. This is the biggest weakness of intensive carrot. This is a concept that I see a lot of people overlook. I call it offensive momentum. You ever notice how, in most PvZ games and pvz light games, the hardest part is usually the early game? Especially in mods, by the mid late game you rarely have any real issues, and when you do, it's because of an obvious problem you've made. Even in really, really hard levels, it's usually the early game that's the hardest, and it's rare for the late game to be particularly difficult. This is because of something I'm going to call offensive momentum, and the premise is quite simple. Winning makes winning easier, and losing makes losing easier. If you are defending zombies comfortably, you have a much better chance of beating the next zombie. If your defense is able to kill zombies quickly, you can place more sunflowers further right, meaning you can plant more offensive plants. This simple premise is key, and important to really show the main weakness of intensive carrots. Intensive carrot doesn't help you win. It makes you lose slower. This is an important difference, as most other plants in the game will actually remove the problem. Keeping a fan's momentum and keeping the field under control is so valuable to keep winning and keeping his zombies off you, while Intensive Carrot is unable to do this. Again, do note that Intensive Carrot can only revive plants, it does not damage or affect zombies, and as a result, it cannot generate any further offense momentum in most cases. In comparison, using a squash or cherry bomb will clear up swarms of zombies, generally saving a plant before it goes down, ensuring it has no downtime while gone. In addition, you can use them before. You can't use intensive carrot if it's zombies over the dead plant, as we'll just die again instantly. And this only really applies in mods. 
in vanilla, the level's often over before you lose any plants. When recording footage, I seriously had an issue where I simply did not lose any plants that died to use intensive Caradon, because the balance vinces just totally cleared everything before I could lose anything. I simply had to hold myself back to even use intensive carrot, which says a lot about its value. To make matters worse, the sea sloths simply don't play in intensive carrot's favor. If you could bring intensive carrot and the instant planet would replace it, you could theoretically have a very interesting option. However, this is not the case. You have 8 slots in maximum, and a lot of inses are in PUZ2. But, as is, you're losing out on some very powerful options and style of damaging instas. Intensive Carrot is simply not worth a slot. This is the inherent flaw with reviving that renders Intensive Carrot bad. It doesn't provide offensive momentum. As a result, you will only ever use it for the specific counters it's good for. You know, the few things that Intensive Carrot Carl is yelling at me like, Oh, but creeps is good with this, which clearly exists. Intensive carrot call, I mean, N not the few encounters. Because while it's decent enough in them, it's not actually that great. Okay, so now we've cleared up why intensive carrot sucks, there's a few more things I feel need to cover. Most lean things that intensive carrot isn't exactly the most useful for, but you know, people bring these up often enough that I think going over them is worthwhile enough. Firstly, there is one way in vanilla they can use a plant without a zombie being directly on top of it, at the back line, and that is a Gargantua Prime. Gargantua Prime is a very powerful zombie that has laser eyes, as you do, and these can burn up plants from across the field. This poses as the one real thing that an intensive carrot can really help with, as these can target your valuable plants and kill them quite easily. This is one of the few cases where reviving a plant can occur without it being lost at the front lines. And I say in this case reviving plants is a very viable thing. Ambushers is another very key thing. Ambushers spawn zombies behind the front line, and this would offer up a lot of opportunities for plants to die in cases and places where carrot could be useful. This is the key thing that intensive needs to be viable, and as a result, it's worth keeping in mind. Unfortunately, these alone aren't actually enough. Go figure. You see, Gargantra Primes? They are actually pretty darn rare. Most levels will not spawn more than one in vanilla. In a few mods, they'll be spawned a little more sure, but even in these cases, they don't tend to spawn in huge numbers. And in most of these cases, there will be superior options to deal with them, such as EMP to Iceberg. In addition, Prime Gargantuas are never really going to be the only main threat. In every case, there will be other significant threats. And considering very in for the future, the main threat they are likely going to be? Football mech! Which is absolutely the counter to intensive carrots. You can see the problem. As for ambushes, this comes down to the fact you are very rarely going to see ambushes that go beyond column 3 and column 4. And if these are common enough to be a problem, plants like Repeater are entirely capable of gunning 99% of the swarm down, as is simply using a plant like Peapod instead. Ambushes are definitely something that lead themselves to intensive carrot being better, sure but they don't actually get countered that badly. And often, if these ambushes happen to be a problem, you'd rather have an instant plant like Ghost Pepper or Crocodile anyways, as these can shred zombies quickly and prevent you from losing the game. That's not to say that either situations are worth totally ignoring, but I feel the need to point out that both cases still don't solve the problem the zombies actually pose. They just mitigate the damage they can cause, and as a result are simply niche. Anyways, neither decisions are particularly fantastic. And I want to highlight this is the last stat Karras' ability to arrive a vast majority of plants will be brought up. There isn't anything else I've missed. I've actually personally played levels where Carrot was outright a very important pick, I feel need to point out, but these are the kind of levels that only exist in very specific circumstances, and I've only ever played these levels in Ickles Lunatic, a family tar mode, and even then only in very specific levels. I feel like Maz will kill me if I didn't bring this up. But yeah, it's useful there, I guess. Anyways, this is the part where we talk about the reviving thing that Intensive Carrot Carl has been exploding about in a far off corner for about a year now. You see, when plants are revived, they are brought back with their initial state. For some plants like Daisy, this means they start their weakest, but for others, it means they can act again immediately. Or for some other plants like Holy Barrier, they can restock under heavily limited ammunition when revived which is a very powerful and unique trait I want to keep in mind. This also applies to any plant that has an effect on being eaten or planted. 
Carrot is able to constantly activate his abilities over and over again, allowing plants like Explonut to explode time and time again. The issue is that this is solely a modern synergy. I'm just going to bring up Explonut's stats, and uh, gotta bring up Intensive Carrots for, for comparison. I don't think I need to say much more. <laughs> The only plant I can realistically see in Hezzard Carrot being great for is Hot Bait, who isn't exactly spectacular by modern PZ2 standards. Even Holly really doesn't gain a whole lot, considering that plant finding Holly will also restore its shots, and level length is so short that this is more than enough. Anyways, in mods where Explode it costs a little bit more, it can be quite helpful to allow them to explode over and over and over again. This is a strategy I definitely can't ignore as something Intensive Carrot is very capable of creating. However, I do personally consider this more so carrot abuse than carrot intended use. Still, this is absolutely a powerful strategy that I strongly recommend you try if you're ever playing a Plant vs. Zombies 2 mod and feel like watching the world burn, with in terms of carrot and some of the plant both available. Also, this is a small tangent, but I feel me specifically bring up a Cleese tier 3 carrot. I just realized it's guts, but I guess I should bring it up. It costs 250 sun, adds 0 seconds recharge, but multiplies the plant it revives HP by a small amount, just 15 times. This sounds more broken than it actually is. For the most part, walls gain absurd HP with this, most of the time the expensive walls don't really need it, see T every tallnut, but they're also usually more likely to die by and kill zombies, which don't really care about intensive carrot. Still, T3 Carrot has some very broken crap when working with plants like Primal Walnut, which becomes impenetrable to gogs essentially, and has great synergy from melee plants, as they now can act as walnuts instead of needing another plant entirely. Though the existence of Pumpkin makes this less critical than it was in the past. In other mods, Intensive Carrot exists pretty much entirely for the sake of gimmick levels, and I firmly believe it was a Romano case for an eternity. Intensive Carrot fundamentally doesn't work because reviving isn't valuable, and that it can't provide any further support. This is one of those things that I find super interesting to discuss and try to prove, in any capacity. Like, the fundamental complexity of Plant vs Zombies gameplay is super fascinating to me, and I think being able to even explain offensive momentum to people is interesting, but also introduce some other concepts to people who may not know them. Still, this stuff is just fun for me to talk about, and I'm glad to deliver. Seriously, I'll made the Spike Weed did last time blow up. I don't know how you got a video about Spike Weed of all things to blow up to absurd heights compared to really anything else ever done, but y'all did it, and I am thankful. Anyways, if you're at all interested in the background footage, I put the mods I play in the description, along with their initial usage in this video. PZ2 mods tend to be very different to the base game, and you may want to give them a shot. Might be a cup of tea, I don't know. Otherwise, I plan to do a lot more videos in this style. If you want to complain about this video, feel free to do so, but also let me know what plants you think could be fun to talk about. I've got plenty of plants myself, but knowing a plant people actually like or think are interesting is always greatly helpful, and would appreciate the help immensely. Also, liking, subscribing, you know the drill, it's important and I do appreciate it. Otherwise, this has been Creeps, and screw you, Intensive Carrot Carl!